Vanessa Salma Schimmel for Vital Options and the Group Room at ASCO in Chicago. Um, we welcome now Dr. Joan Mortimer, Director of the Women's Cancer Program at the City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center in Duarte, California. Hi, Dr. Mortimer. Hi, Selma. So you're here to talk to us about breast cancer yes. and some of the exciting updates here at ASCO. I think some of the most interesting data was presented in the HER2 positive breast cancer patients. And you know, earlier today, the data from a study looking at this new drug, which is not yet FDA approved, TDM1, uh, was found to be superior to lipatinib and capecitabine in, in women with uh, recurrence of HER2 positive breast cancer. And then the exciting thing is not just that it looks like it prolongs the duration of effect, but at least preliminarily, it looks like it improves survival. And statistically, they can't actually say that just yet. They, they need to further follow up. But it, at least it looks like it may be a survival advantage, which is, of course, the most important endpoint. The other part of this drug is that it has far fewer side effects than what's out there right now than, than giving Herceptin or Lipatinib with Capecitabine. There's not so much diarrhea, not so much bone marrow depression. It, and, and so it was easier to tolerate. The quality of life of women who were on this drug was superior to being on lapatinib and capecitabine. I think another very interesting uh, series of papers that were presented this morning look at the association of osteoporosis with outcome in women who have early stage breast cancer who are treated with either aromacin or arimidex, either exemestane or anastrozole in the preventative setting. And it turns out that, that probably osteoporosis and treatment, more importantly, treatment of osteoporosis was associated with a better outcome of disease. And, and, and that was a pretty interesting finding that sort of supports, you know, the data that's been out there in the Azure trial and the ABCSG that taking a bisphosphonate like zoledronate may improve your disease outcomes. So that was a retrospective review of women who reported that they had osteoporosis or not. So, you know, there are problems with the way the data was collected, but it's just one more piece of information that sort of sheds light on an association between osteoporosis and its treatment and an improvement in breast cancer outcomes. The thing about the data that was presented today, this update from the Azure trial, um, really points out a, a real flaw in, in our understanding of menopause in women with breast cancer. So um, in the Azure trial, women got randomized to get their chemotherapy with or without zoledronate, zometa. And it turned out that there's a suggestion that young women, women under the age of 40 who got Zometa, actually had an adverse effect of having the Zometa uh, in, as far as their cancer outcome, whereas women who were five years after their last period did better. And, and I guess, you know, this is something that's my sort of one of my personal research interests is that we have no idea what hormones are going on in women who get chemotherapy when they're young versus when they're old because it, this seems to suggest that the hormone environment that predisposes to osteoporosis and for which treatment of osteoporosis produces a favorable outcome, we know about it after, in women after menopause, but what about the young women and why is this an adverse outcome con conceivably? Is there anything happening for women with advanced disease that's been presented here? An early a study that was presented today seemed to show that in women who have a first recurrence of, harm, of HER2 positive breast cancer that, that taking Herceptin with Taxol was, was superior to being on Lipatinib and Capecitabine. Uh, and there are other endpoints of the study like whether people get brain metastases and so on that we don't know but at least as far as putting the cancer in remission and keeping it in remission uh, taxol with Herceptin was superior to Lipatinib and, and Capecitabine. So I think we've always known Lipatinib is maybe not as good an anti-HER2 drug as, as Herceptin, uh, as Trastuzumab, but this was just one more piece of data that, that, that supported that there is a little bit of an inferiority that's, that's meaningful. The other study um, that was, was, a, was a comparison of three different types of taxanes in women with advanced breast cancer. So this was a study that was done by the Cancer and Leukemia Group B where women were randomly assigned 
with newly diagnosed uh, metastatic disease to get either Taxol once a week or Ixabepilone or Abraxane. And you know, the latter two drugs are obviously so significantly more costly than Taxol given on a weekly basis. And it turned out there was no difference in benefits. So going cheaper may be better. Is there anything new in the breast cancer pipeline in the the chemotherapy arena for breast cancer is probably, I don't think there's anything happening there. Is there? Is everything now in the, uh, the targeted therapy area? Well, the targeted therapies are, are obviously incredibly important um, because, but the, and it really is the heart of personalized medicine. There was a study presented from Washington University today that looked at women with, who had her ER positive estrogen fed breast cancers, luminal breast cancers, and they did a gene analysis on 77 women, so full gene analysis. And, it, and these were women who had received, who had a biopsy before getting hormone therapy, um, and they divided the group up into those who were resistant to hormone therapy and those that were beneficial, that the hormone was beneficial to. Those women that were resist, who had resistant breast cancers had twice as many mutations. But going back to the targeted therapy issue, the, the major mutations were actually mutations in cancer, in tumor suppressor genes, not in genes that were potential targets. And so that was a little disheartening. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think we need, we need, this is 77 patients. It's the first time that that's actually been really looked at in a systematic fashion, but it, it, uh, it, it was a little bit bothersome that we didn't have more druggable targets that were found in these cancers. Thank you, Dr. Joan Mortimer, Director of the Women's Cancer Program, City of Hope, Comprehensive Cancer Center in Southern California. Thank you. Thank you, Selma.